Well, good morning, Vine Church. We are on um, a 14-week preaching series, The Most Excellent Way. And um, I've made it my goal by the end of this series to try and memorize uh, a portion of 1 Corinthians 13. So maybe you can help me, starting with 1 Corinthians 12, 31, which is, and yet I will show you a more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy or a clanging, Right, and if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am. Next. Come on, help me. If I give all I have and deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain. Love is and kind. Love does not envy and does not boast. Okay, we'll stop there. That's as far as I've got, all right? So see, see how you get on. It's, it's crazy, you know, when you're a kid, uh, you just seem to learn things a lot easier and it's harder as you get older. So we're, we're on to love is kind and it's actually coupled with patience, which Alan did a wonderful love is patient and kind. And interestingly, they're coupled together, patience and kindness. It's very hard to be kind without patience and it's hard to be patient without kindness. And um, Alan did a wonderful job of unpacking that. And I've asked Steve and Patty Bowen from America to share their thoughts. I thought, who better to share some thoughts and kindness than Steve and Patty Bowen? And they'll introduce themselves because some of you aren't familiar with who you are. But I was praying this week is in, uh, on my commute. So I was praying to God, God, you, you said your greatest commandment is to love you with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind. And if love is kind, how can I be kind to you, Lord? Uh, what does it mean? How can I be kind? Because part of love is kind. How can I be kind to God? And how can I be kind to others? And immediately these uh, verses came to mind in John 21, 15, where Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? And he said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to them, feed my lambs. How can we love you, Jesus? Love my people. How can I be kind to to you, Jesus, be kind to one another. Show kindness to others, and you're being kind to me. And uh, if someone's kind to your children, you know what I mean, because it touches the heart of the Father. So one way, how can we be kind? How can we be love God? We are kind to one another. And also, I was reminded of the parable of the, the sheep and the goats. And the parable of the sheep all showed kindness. They showed kindness with possessions. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. So they were kind with their possessions. They were kind with their time. And they were kind with their words to the lost, the least, and the last. And what did Jesus say? I tell you, whatever you did, whatever kindness you showed for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. So how can we be kind to you, Jesus? Be kind to the least, the lost, and the last. Be kind with your time. Be kind with your hospitality. Be kind with your possessions. Be kind with your words. And then I started to say, well, Lord, okay, great, but how can I be kind specifically to you? I've got that, I think. I'm grasping that, the connection to love others, but we've also to love you. And I felt God challenged me, well, what does it feel like to receive kindness? When do you receive kindness? And when you receive kindness from people, what is it that you receive? And I felt my mind started to go to, well, when someone gives me their time, when someone gives me their attention, and you know what I'm talking about. You know when you've really got someone's attention, undistracted. So when someone gives you their attention, when someone is genuinely interested, and you and I both know the difference between how are you doing and genuine interest in your welfare. Genuine interest 
in the things you are interested in. I feel kindness from that person. I feel love that they are genuinely interested, not just panning me off, or I'm being generally, genuinely interested in people and not just panning them off. And that's hard when you work in the profession of meeting hundreds of people in a day to keep it genuine. <laughs> <laughs> you know and those that work in the retail or work in the healthcare, you know what I'm talking about, but it's that practice of kindness, every single one. I'm like, Lord, every single one? Every single customer? <laughs> you know? Without getting weary and tired, like, yeah, well, what can I help you? Sore head again, all oh, right, I sore head. Been drinking last night, yeah? No, you know, it's, it's, it's being kind. When you're kind by genuinely being interested and then listening, listening is such a kindness. When someone genuinely listens, and then if you're genuinely listening, they will then ask questions about what you've said to find out more. When, when you receive that, you're receiving kindness. When you give that, you're receiving kindness. And then God says, I felt God saying, well, you can do the same to me. You can sh give me your time. That's kindness. You can love me with your attention. I want your attention. You can be kind to me by being interested in the things that are on my heart. God, what's on your heart today? What would you have me pray about today? What's important to you, God? That's kindness to God. Love to God, for love is kind. When I listen to God, that's a kindness. Genuinely, my sheep hear my voice. And Mary sat down in Luke chapter 10, 42, attentively, there's kindness. She sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. There's a beautiful goal, there's a beautiful kindness, there's a beautiful love that we could sit before Jesus in the morning before our day starts and be kind with our time and be kind with our attention, absorbing every revelation. He's ready to give you revelation, conviction, shine his light. Mary has discovered the one thing most important to choose to sit at my feet. She is undistracted at the Passion Translation. And there's a, there's a kindness there being undistracted and I won't take that privilege from her. And these are how we can love one another. This is, these are how we can love God. And also say, oh, but how else, Lord? How else can I show you kindness? I have to love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. Love is kind. How can I be kind to you, God? And I felt him saying that, well, when someone, how do you? knows and does what pleases you, um, and they, they, uh, they know and do what you enjoy, and they know and do what makes you happy, that is kindness. And you can do the same for me. You can know and do what pleases me, son, and do those things, and that is kindness. You can know what I enjoy and what makes me happy and do those things. You can do that for me, you can do that for one another. That's love, isn't it? To know what makes your somebody else happy and to do what makes them happy, to do what they enjoy, even if you don't particularly enjoy it. That's a love, that's a kindness. And to avoid what offends or displeases. When I try my best to avoid offending or displeasing that person, that is kindness, and we can do that for God. We say, God, what displeases you? What offends you? And my kindness and my love is by avoiding uh, doing anything that displeases or offends God and others. 1 Corinthians 8 is wonderful about that. We need a whole series, a whole week to unpack 1 Corinthians 8 about food offered to idols. But it says, I conclude, that if my eating certain food deeply offends my brother or sister and hinders his advance in Christ, I will never eat it again. I don't want to be guilty of causing my brother or sister to be wounded and defeated. 
And so we need a week to unpack that. But it's basically saying, I will not do anything that offends, even though it's okay in my conscience. If it's not okay with my brother or sister's conscience, I'm going to avoid doing that very thing because that is kindness and that is love. And love is the most important thing. And it is many English versions, it's called loving kindness. And I love that because you're combining love and kindness into one word to describe the love of God and therefore the love that we should show to Him and to one another. And here's a few definitions of loving kindness. A completely undeserved kindness and generosity. That's the love of God. That's the love that we are called to walk in. And uh, it's coupled with undeserved kindness and generosity that we would walk in that. Um, it's not just a feeling, but it's an action. And we're going to hear that from Stephen Patty in one minute. It must be active. And I love that about putting actions to our faith. And hesed, love and kindness, is never merely an abstract feeling of goodwill, but always entails practical action. And that's what you're going to hear. So I love this thing about practical action. Um, in our marriages, practical action in our workplaces. It could just be making the coffees and the teas on the tea break. That's a kindness. That's a practical action on behalf of another. And lastly, loving kindness is built upon those two words, love and kindness, in the definition of it. So it's that coupling together. It means tenderness and consideration towards other, a tenderness. And that's what God's love is like. And as he continues to fill us and transform us, that we would walk with a tenderness and a consideration. Love is kind. Chesed, loving kindness, is tender and considerate. And the words capturing the essence of loving kindness is always towards others. It's an outward expression, not one of self-seeking motivation. And you see that word in lots of Old Testament, especially all throughout the Psalms. One example, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It may have been what you read, Zara, which would be quite incredible. Let me know what verse you read. For he forgives all your iniquities, he heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, and who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. May we be crowned walk in loving kindness and tender mercies. Please welcome Steve and Patty Bowen. They're not here uh, live, unfortunately. I tried to get them live on Zoom, but the time gap and all the rest of it and technology was too difficult. It was quite expensive to get them here in person. So we've got the next best thing, we've got them in person. So even though they're not here, just put your hands together and welcome Steve and Patty Bowen to come and share. There in Dunfermline, Scotland. Uh, my wife and I lived there for many years, and we had two children in Dunfermline and another child while we were up in Inverness. And uh, we always tease them. We say, uh, you're made from girders, iron brew. <laughs> and they laugh at us. But anyway, uh, to hear just to encourage you, uh, Aaron asked me to share uh, some things about kindness. And I just want to talk a little bit about my journey, how I got connected into this whole kindness uh, outreach. Go out on the streets in Dunfermline, and uh, I'd be there with my guitar. We'd have several people uh, there with me. They would be singing, and then we would pause, and someone would give their story. And we, we liked what we were doing. I mean, we did have some conversations, but we didn't have the conversations and the input that we wanted to have. And I read a book while I was there called Conspiracy of Kindness by a guy named Steve Shogren, talking about servant evangelism or kindness outreach. And uh, one thing my Bible college professor told, told us all, he said this, if a method works in any culture, it's probably God. If it doesn't work in any culture, it's probably American. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we embraced uh, going out into the streets of Dunfermline, serving people, and uh, sometimes we would take crazy things like light bulbs out in the street, give away light bulbs. And I remember one time a friend of mine was out, we were out giving light bulbs away, and she uh, bumped into a woman. A woman just turned around and started heading back to the town center. 
And uh, my friend was there with a light bulb and handed her a light bulb. And the lady said, well, why are you doing this? And she said, well, we're just showing you God's love in a practical way. And the lady said, that's amazing because I just forgot that I needed a light bulb. I turned around to go get a light bulb and there you were. <laughs> so anyway, as a result of that uh, conversation there, there's some really cool things that did happen uh, where the lady did experience the goodness of God in a practical way and more than a practical way. So where uh, I began uh, this whole journey of realizing that love is patient and that love is kind and that it is the kindness and goodness of God that does lead people uh, to repentance to know him. Uh, I like what the Passion Translation paraphrase says, says, love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. I think that's a great, great paraphrase. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. And I just think that's such a great statement. Uh, the Father so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. This is a kind intention that uh, the writer writes in Timothy that's according to the gospel, the good news, which is the kind intention of the Father's heart. Jeremiah says it this way, Let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding and know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness justice and righteousness on the earth for in these things i delight i always found that scripture interesting that those who boast in god are supposed to boast in understanding who god is and the understanding comes from the first word of understanding that he's the lord who exercises kindness and when the kindness and goodness of god appeared it says in uh, titus it says that he saved us not on the basis of deeds that we have done in righteousness but according to his mercy by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us lavishly, richly, through his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's where the kindness and love of God appeared, was upon the cross. Well, love does look like something. And I have a couple of pictures that my wife, Patty, she tells me I show all the time. I say, well, I like these pictures. <laughs> I keep showing them. So anyway, it's a picture of a group of friends. They're just having a really good time. It's a hot summer day, and they're out just uh, hanging out with each other. Then all of a sudden, the buckets of water come out, and they're just throwing buckets of water on, on each other. And it's so cool, the picture, because I can just imagine what's going on. There's laughter, there's joy, there's refreshing, there's all these things happening. And I think that that's how God uh, begins to show us his love as individuals. But I also think that he begins to show us his love uh, through our world, through really lavishing his love through what Jesus did on, upon, upon the cross. And this love that he shows upon the cross is, is much greater than little buckets. The, the love that he showed us upon the cross was this huge bucket of water, huge bucket of love that he just cascaded upon all mankind through his son. So love does look like something. And, and I'm so grateful for these two pictures, especially the, the last one. Well, Jesus is the one who modeled the kindness and love for mankind when he appeared. And all you have to do is read through the Gospels with the viewpoint, having the viewpoint or mindset. God is revealing his love to us and his kindness to us through his son. And everything that Jesus did while he was upon this planet was to demonstrate the love of the Father. To show that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the son, the world might be saved. And Jesus consistently over and over and over revealed the kindness and goodness of God to his, to his people upon this planet, beginning in Jerusalem. And then later on, his disciples began to go to all the world to proclaim the good news, to show and to demonstrate the goodness and kindness of God. So, what is the point of this whole thing of, of kindness and receiving God's kindness? Well, it's simply this, that it, here's the point. Freely you have received, give. That's what God asks us to do. He asks us to give away what he has given us. He has shown kindness and goodness to us. And so our response to his goodness and kindness in our attitudes and our actions and in our words is really to give away what God has given to us. And every one of us has something different to give away. I know that this year, 
has been the biggest year that we have had here at the Upper Room as far as giving away and touching our community. It's been a culmination of seven years of really going into the community and loving on the community, especially in our school systems. Uh, this year, we're, we were able to host and are hosting a Bible study during school hours for kids who, who want to know more about Jesus. They come to our building and in another building, another church here in our community to learn about Jesus. Some of these kids have never uh, heard about Jesus before. Well, how did that happen? It's through hours and hours and days and days and weeks and consistently going and loving and serving our students and our teachers of our community. And uh, it's, it's proved itself over and over again. This, you won't believe this, but three days ago, we received a phone call from the uh, uh, Mrs. Robbins. She's head of the bus drivers here in Tip City. And she uh, left a voice message. I'm so sorry that this is so late. But would you guys be willing to host a meal, a lunch for all of our bus drivers and support staff coming up this Wednesday? That's in two days, folks. That's, <laughs> that's on Wednesday that I'm doing this video. And you know what we said? We said, yes, of course we'll do this. And so on Wednesday, all the bus, bus drivers of our community and the support staff are going to be meeting at a, at a Mexican restaurant just to get together and to be encouraged. And we're so glad that they ask us to do this. And the reason why they ask us to do this, these kinds of things, is because we've proven ourselves over and over again. So that is the point. Uh, uh, kindness outreach is really loving people through our actions, our attitudes, and through our words. That's what kind of kindness is. And that's how kindness flows from us here in uh, Tip City. We realize that uh, when we're out there serving people and loving people, that they not just look at what we do, they look at how we do what we do. This is really important. They look at our actions, but they also look at our attitudes and they look at our words. They listen to our words that we speak. And I, I love what Toby said. He says, attitudes are contagious. Make yours worth catching. <laughs> and so we've endeavored to be friendly, open-hearted people to our community, to be positive and to really guard our hearts when we're in communication with our, our leaders and the people in our community because we realize that we're the Jesus, the maybe sometimes the only Jesus that people will see. Well, again, this year, this past year, we had the, our greatest experience of going out in the community. Uh, Number-wise, we've had more people than we've ever had. At Thanksgiving, we had uh, many, many people come to help deliver 80 Thanksgiving dinners out into our community. So those who could afford a Thanksgiving meal, a lot of, again, a lot of the families came, came from the school systems where they ask us again to go out and to share a meal with the people that were in need. We said, yes, we do this. And so we gathered on a Saturday and we went out. The stories came back, just really incredible uh, stories, the conversations we had, the gratitude, uh, the need that was so great that we were able to meet. And it's very humbling, to be honest, it's very humbling. But uh, I know something about you guys. I know that you, you, a few years ago that you made the newspaper, because I looked up the, the, the uh, article, and I found the article, and it says this, Vine Church hailed Lifesaver dishing up or delivering up 100 meals daily. <laughs> and that's what you guys did. You were out there in action and love and indeed sharing your love with the community. And I just commend this to you. I just commend kindness to you. That kindness looks like something. And kindness means that love is kind. And so I commend you this whole concept to you that you guys would excel even more of loving and sharing God's love with your community. Well, anyway, I've rambled on enough. Thank you all for allowing me to join your service today. Uh, Aaron has some uh, other materials. If you're really interested, you can get them from him. And uh, I just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you for being formative uh, in our lives. And uh, Scotland has such a deep place in our hearts uh, that we can never uh, repay uh, what you as people have done for us. Uh, especially you, Jimmy Dowds and Aaron Dowds, especially you too. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Hi, everybody. I'm Patty. Um, our church family has opportunities throughout the year to show kindness in an intentional way. It's an, it's an easy way to get people out in the community and um, 
we did that recently over Valentine's Day. And um, Steve and I were talking about it in the car and I, I um, grabbed a bag that had little chocolates in it and a little note and I thought, I need to have that available because we were going shopping. We went in and I had kind of forgotten about it and we were walking around doing our shopping, went through the checkout line and I noticed a lady that um, she, she was with, a, she had a walker and uh, she was struggling to get through the, the checkout line and I noticed her and I thought, I don't even remember what I thought. I just noticed her. And so a few minutes later, we went out to the front, returning to our car and she was sitting on a bench and I, I just took out the, my little bag of, of um, chocolates that I had available and I handed it to her, walked over to her and handed it to her. And I said, I think you need a hug today. And uh, <laughs> she smiled and she said, yeah, I do. And uh, so we talked about her knee operation that she had had. And I, I asked her if I could pray for her. And uh, we prayed for her and prayed for healing, prayed for peace prayed for a, a quick recovery and, and just blessed her in Jesus' name. And the thing about it is that it, was, it wasn't a lot of thought and the only thing that I did was I came ready and I came into the shopping place ready to share, ready to find an opportunity, but I, I forgot about it. And then God highlighted this woman to me and it wasn't a, a great supernatural occurrence. It was just something that the Holy Spirit dropped into my heart and he helped me to notice her. And, and then I was prepared. I was ready. And it becomes, after a while, it becomes a, a way of life of just noticing people in your um, sphere of influence, where you're working, where you're um, shopping, where you're, even people around you in your church family, you just sometimes can have that just um, moment of awareness that maybe they need a touch from God. And, um, you know, the Bible is full of kindness from God. And when we have the Holy Spirit within our hearts, it just becomes natural. We, um, he encourages us to be kind in our family. He encourages us to be kind in our community. And all of those things can come naturally to us, but often we have to be intentional about it. We have to be maybe thinking about it and be aware that um, kindness is something that, that God encourages us to do. And he showed his immeasurable riches toward us in his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. And I, I think it's a real honor to be able to show the love of Jesus to people. I am honored to be here and honored to speak to you. Scotland had such a, an amazing impact in our family's life and um, in my life personally, the people that we became friends with. And, and uh, Jimmy, I don't know how you put up with us for the first couple of years, <laughs> but we learned so much about kindness from our time in Scotland and our time. And Jimmy and Elma, were the epitome of kindness toward us. And we're forever grateful for that. And I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about the impact that Scotland and the people of Scotland had on our lives. We have, um, I don't think Steve mentioned, but we have two wonderful grandchildren, Harper and Mirren. And uh, Mirren is spell is uh, named after the patron saint of football because they're family or football fanatics, and his name is spelled M-E-A-D-H-R-A-N. And he just is a perfect Mirren. And Harper is our oldest grandchild, and they, um, they love football. They watch it with their dad, and, and uh, we are very grateful for that time. And we love you guys and appreciate you, appreciate what you're doing in, in Scotland, and and we follow what you do, and we love you very much. God bless you all. Yeah, come on, put your hands together for Stephen Patty Bowen.
That was, um, I just want to commend that as an absolute masterclass, actually. And I mean, they are living it, as they said, for years, years and years and years of sewing. And um, so much gold content in that from both of them. I mean, my goodness, that short few moments from Patty. Um, I just want to highlight a few things that she said. I noticed her because love and kindness notice. They affect her eyes to see. And you see that with Jesus and Zacchaeus. Jesus noticed love when you, when, when you have the Holy Spirit. She says, kindness notices, love sees. The only thing I did was I came ready. You know, and that I, I love that. Could we be ready? Practically, with something in your bag, something in your pocket. She had a little bag of kisses, hugs, a little note, a little card that could maybe have the QR code or the website of the church or something on it. Be ready, because if you're ready, that's faith. And then the Holy Spirit will give you opportunity. The Holy Spirit gives me opportunities, and I'm not ready, and I wish I had something to leave them, a wee card or something. And so I'm, I'm challenged that love is ready. Kindness is ready. So could we do that practically as homework this week? You can personalize it to yourself. Maybe, men, it's not like a little bag of kisses and love hearts for you. Maybe it's something different. I don't know. You have to be creative. What, what would you be comfortable giving? Um, you know, uh, a big Yorkie, chunky chocolate bar or something a bit more manly for you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Personalize it to yourself, but be ready. I came ready to find an opportunity and to bless Let's be ready, Vine Church. Let's get ready. Let's start allowing kindness. I love it. And I'm stirred every time I hear Steve. Yes, yes, yes. It's the kindness of God that leads to repentance, okay? So let's sow kindness. Um, he helped me to notice her. I love that. The Holy Spirit helps us to notice. Pay attention to your compassion. Com pay attention to when your heart is stirred. Be a pay attention to when someone um, captures your attention and listen to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. I was prepared after I was ready, and after a while it became a habit and natural to notice people. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That's We want to be changed in this series so that it becomes habit and natural to notice people. Um, it was at a moment of awareness that they just needed a touch from God. The Holy Spirit in our hearts makes it natural. Would we become naturally supernatural? Yeah, so that it's natural to notice, natural to speak, natural to offer to pray, natural to share the good news of Jesus Christ, natural to share our testimony, natural to invite somebody to church. Yeah, you may get persecuted. Yes, you may get ridiculed, but then it shows us that we're actually living what Jesus called us to live. Uh, the mission that he called us to live. Um, so drawing this to a close, Steve gave me an update. I don't know if Kate managed to get that picture I, I sent her, but don't worry if he didn't. I, um, so he videoed that before. They served the bus drivers this beautiful meal, and they got a response from the school director. Um, he said, you made the members of our transportation department feel valued and appreciated. There we go. Um, can we make people feel valued and appreciated? Thank you for hosting lunch to celebrate the Love the Bus Month and recognize our drivers, aides, mechanic, and director for all they do to transport students safely. Your, generation, your generosity and kindness are appreciated. So after years and years of so kindness and love and serving the school, now the kids are allowed to go to the church and learn about Jesus. But that doesn't come. Um, overnight. That doesn't come without sowing. In order to reap, we have to sow. And uh, so I, I, I just love that. Wonderful. Um, you should have an email at 10.30 this morning in your inbox with uh, notes from Steve that you can use. Um, there's a PDF, lots of Bible verses about kindness. There's a YouTube video with a 45-minute teaching on kindness he did at his local church. Um, there's his PowerPoints, there's uh, resources. So I send your inbox at 10.30 this morning, and if you didn't get it, there's a QR code up on that wall at the, at the, the door there that you can scan and sign up so that you will receive those emails. And um, so I would, would encourage you as life groups, um, uh, individual personal study, 
for prayer, uh, you can look into that. Okay. So, just, oh yeah, there we go. Thank you, Kate. Well done, you did amazing. Pop that back up a wee second. There we go. There's the bus drivers. This was Tip City Schools thanking the church. Yeah, that's when we know we're making a difference, when the world thanks the church, doesn't complain about the church or irritated by the church. For hosting lunch at Dawes Lunas, that sounds good. Uh, for our transportation department in honor of Love the Bus Month, we appreciate your kindness and generosity. Big love heart and lots of happy bus drivers. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. It's wonderful. Um, Kate, could you just pop the last slide of my uh, PowerPoint up, please? Um, so, I want us to stir up. I want to, yeah, just pop the last slide of my PowerPoint. I'm going to ask you to get into groups of threes or fours and just share a story when someone's act of kindness touched your life and then share a story when your act of kindness touched someone. It can be something really small, something simple. It doesn't have to be big and elaborate, okay? So just take five, ten minutes just now. Get into, you know, you can shift your chairs around. Um, introduce yourself if you don't know the people around you. Threes or fours. Just take five, ten minutes. We could just maybe have some music playing gently in the background. And then after that, we're going to close with a song of worship, okay?